All right. Thank you, Till Nation. We appreciate that warm welcome. Thank, uh, welcome to the HTC Center here today for a great day uh, in Coastal Carolina athletics. Before we get started, I just want to make sure uh, everyone knows uh, media we will have after uh, Coach talks. He will be open to questions uh, from you guys. And then we will have a breakout session available for our administration later on for you all. Uh, at this time, we'll go ahead and get started. And I'd like to introduce our uh, Coast Carolina University president, Michael T. Benson. Good afternoon and welcome. We're so delighted to have you all here to Coach Beck and to Tamara and your family. We're so delighted to have you as part of the Coastal Carolina University family. I heard a few days ago that a Power Five program in three years had four coaches. We've had football now at Coastal Carolina for 20 years, and Coach Beck is our fourth coach. So, Coach, there is a continuity here, a longevity uh, that I, I think speaks to the, the power of the program, the solid foundation in place, and the fact that we are so delighted to welcome you to CCU. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank all those that have gone before us. You'll have a chance to hear from Coach Moglia here in just a second. I want to thank especially him, and he'll speak about the process and how we got to this point. But uh, it's been a team effort. And you are inheriting, Coach, a terrific program with great student athletes. And I want to especially recognize our team. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for being here today. I know this has been a difficult period, and I appreciate how well you've represented the university. In a few weeks, we will commemorate the 82nd anniversary of a very famous statement by Winston Churchill, who before America entered World War II said to Franklin Roosevelt, give us the tools and we will finish the job. Coach Beck, our job as an administration, as support uh, personnel here at the university is to give you the tools so you and your team can finish the job. And that's what we're gonna do. Uh, to the other Coaches here, please welcome Coach Beck into your fraternity and sorority of coaches. We're delighted to see many of you here today. It is a very congenial group, and they support each other. We love each other, and I'm grateful for that. I also would be remiss if I didn't recognize members of our Board of Trustees that are here today. Thank you all for being here, members of the administration, and to our community, and to members of the CAF, thank you all very much. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Coach Joe Moglia, and thank him again for all of his effort, efforts in getting us to this point today. Coach Moglia. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I'm excited today, and I'm really excited about going forward. And uh, every time you have a transition, there is change. But with that change, it, it, there, there is a lot of excitement, and there are a lot of good things that are going on. And I, I, thought, I thought it made sense, uh, as President Benson mentioned, to give you a little bit of an understanding in terms of how all this came about. And in general, I, I really believe that leadership is responsible for clear succession planning. And I think there are some people that call themselves leaders, but they're not leaders. The people that actually leave an organization and they actually don't want the organization they're leaving to do as well as they could because it looks like, oh my God, what are we going to do without that particular person? And by the way, there's no difference in football or university uh, administration or the, the executive world on Wall Street. They're the same principles. Leadership is leadership. And um, so when we look at succession, uh, we look at it in a way where we really understand it's going to have an impact on the future, not just of our football program, but of our entire university and the entire coastal community. So the way we approach this and the way a lot of other, the way a lot of other, in fact, I'd say the vast majority of other athletic programs in the country handle this is that they reach out to a search firm and the search firm has their Rolodex that they develop relationships with over time. Uh, they get paid a lot of money to be able to do that. I doubt any search firm in the history of America has ever watched somebody on, watch film. I doubt that they've really, really dug into details the way you really should if you're doing, doing real due diligence and when you're making a really important decision. And then most of the time, the athletic department is dealing with that person's agent. And you get involved with the contracts and the disputes and it becomes all about money. But I've actually done my homework on this and I think if you look at the head coaches that have, been, that have gotten jobs over the last decade in college football, over 50% 50, 50 of them are mistakes. And the reason for that, that's the way they do it. So they're hoping that everything's gonna work out. That's not the way we've done it at Coastal Carolina. 
I think in terms of, uh, uh, we, we began this, recognizing there's always a possibility. Recognize there's always that possibility. We began really thinking about this three years, three years from now. What happens is, if, is there is a change. What happens if somebody gets sick? How we got, it's our job to make sure we're ready to go with that. So as we started to approach this, there were a handful of things that really, really mattered to us uh, as coastal. And one was obviously we've got to be able to get the right person is football. You got to get a person that's got a good football mind, that he understands that. He's got good experience. He's got all those things. I think in this particular case, uh, I, I, I've, known, I've known Tim for 13 years. And when I had an opportunity to go back to football, it was at the University of Nebraska while he was there. So for two years, I was on that same staff. For two years, I saw the way he recruited. For two years, I saw him put together a game plan. For two years, I was up in the box while he was calling plays with. I wasn't calling the plays with him, but I was up there while he was calling the plays. Uh, I, I saw how he treated his players. I saw the respect and admiration that clearly his players had for him. And that really, really, really did register with me back then. And I wasn't thinking about succession planning then. I was wondering if I was even going to get a job. And uh, so I, I, I've had that type of experience. And, and when you think about football and the experience, uh, Tim certainly got that. But the reality is there are a lot of people. By the way, not all of them have great football experience, great football knowledge. But there are plenty of people out there that do have that. One of the things I like about Tim, too, is his ability to not tell a player, we got to do it this way because we do it this way. He tries to adapt and adjust the offense or the system or the special teams to the talents of the player. Now, I think we've done that here at Coastal. A lot of coaches say that's what they do. That's not what they do. They try to force fit it. We don't do that here. And that's not his philosophy either in terms of that. So all those things I, th I thought made uh, differentiated for me the type of football coach he was. But again, there are good football coaches out there. I think the other piece is we take a lot of pride in what we've developed here and the foundation that we built over the span of the last 10 years. Uh, our football program is something we should be proud of. Uh, I think it's something that's gotten our university national recognition. I got to feel that the people in the community, Horry County, believe that this is part of their community now and we're moving in the right direction as far as all that goes. But we're proud of what we've been able to accomplish. And one of the things that I was looking for, we were looking for, but not asking for it, just looking for it, was it there, is a recognition from the different candidates in terms of were they aware, are they aware of what we've actually done? Are they aware of actually where we came from and where we are now? Are they aware of the transitions we've gone through? Are they aware of the accomplishments we've already had? Are they aware, by the way, how we treat our players and how we treat each other and how we're really in, indeed a family? Are they aware of that? If they weren't aware of that, they were crossed off our list. Because remember, we could get a guy that knows football. And then the other piece of that is for those that were aware, do they recognize that what we have, that they want to build upon the foundation we've already laid? So we've got a foundation. And there's always going to be change. By the way, within our own organization, from year to year, we, make, we adapt and we adjust and we make changes. But is there going to be a guy that cares enough and believes enough in what we are and who we are and what we're doing that he wants to build upon the foundation that we already have? And by the way, many of you may or may not be aware of this, but uh, his daughter Haley was part of our championship volleyball team. And not many coaches anticipating that one day he might get this job actually sent his daughter to the school that one day he was going to be head football coach of so she could do reconnaissance and give dad the ups, the pluses and the minuses, et cetera, et cetera. Not many other coaches would have that ability either. Um, uh, but the ability to be able to appreciate what we have and then build on what we have. And then finally, uh, you know, I, I believe in BAM, not as a, be a man. It's a leadership acronym. Be a, a real man, a real woman, a real leader is somebody that really does stand on their own two feet. A real leader is somebody that really does take responsibility for themselves. A real leader is really somebody that does treat others with, dig others with dignity and respect. And with a real leader, there are no excuses. There are no excuses. You live with the consequences of your actions and you step up for that. And that leader has to have the courage and the guts to make tough decisions, the ones that he really believes is right, even though it may not be in his best interest. And a real leader understands that the real power of leadership is the concept of love. It's the commitment to the well-being of others. A real leader knows it's not about him or her. A real leader understands it's about their people. And with regard to our football program here at Coastal Carolina, that means it's about our players, it's about our staff, it's about the overall team, and it's about the entire community of Coastal Carolina. For me to define somebody like that or say that's somebody to me, 
represents all those values is probably the biggest single compliment I could pay somebody. So those are the reasons why we believed that Tim Beck was the right guy to become part of our family and our head football coach. So with that, I'd like you to meet our head football coach, Tim Beck. What a whirlwind. I love it. I love it. Um, first of all, uh, I cannot tell you how humble, uh, how honored and proud I am to be the fourth football coach at Coastal Carolina. It's, uh, it's surreal. It's hard to believe that uh, I'm up here. And uh, first of all, I got I to gotta thank God for just showing me the way and answering you know, my prayers and our family's prayers. And <clears throat> I want to thank President Benson, Joe Oglia, Matt Hogue, and our board of trustees for believing in me and having faith in me and seeing the, the qualities in me to be able to succeed and come here and continue the great traditions of Coastal Carolina. I think the support, the leadership, the guidance is already set in place and you can see it. There's a culture set here and a, and a tradition in a way that has allowed coaches over the last few years here to be very, very successful. And that starts from the top. It starts from President Benson, Matt and Joe and just allowing, allowing the coach the tools and getting the right people in here. I want to thank my family, my wife Tamara, my son Jordan and his wife Elytra, my daughter Haley. My mom and dad are here and want to thank them. And my uncle and aunt, I got a lot of family, they, they live here. I mean, it was meant to be. It was meant to be. Um, and my story is an interesting one, which I will share in a minute. It's hard being a, a coach's wife, hon. I, I appreciate everything that you've always done and the support. I know I'm the, probably the hardest person to live with, win or lose, because I'm such a perfectionist and want to win so bad. And you always have been there to encourage me. And to Jordan and Haley, all the moving, missing out on so many things uh, <clears throat> along the way, all for this moment and the sacrifices that you made for me to be able to pursue this. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't I hate being emotional. Coaches and mentors along the way, I, I want to thank. I've, I've been extremely blessed. Dave Doran and Tom Herman, Urban Meyer, Bo Pelini, Mark Mangino, Bob Stoops, Bill Snyder, great athletic directors, Tom Osborne and Boo Corrigan, Gene Smith. I mean, just great coaches and mentors that have helped and guided me along the way in this journey but last but not least, I couldn't have done this without the players. It's why I coach. It's, it's to mold young men, to help them become better people, better fathers, better husbands, to be able to mold coaches to help them in any way that I possibly can. And it's why I do what I do. I love it. There's nothing better than being out on the grass on an afternoon, about 75 degrees, and you could just smell the grass and you're playing football. And I've been doing that since I'm a, I've been a kid. And every move and every decision that I've made along the way has been for this moment. And I've waited for this moment for a long time, over 30 years. I grew up playing football. 
started in the backyard, local neighborhoods. We'd go around and play other neighborhoods. And we had a pretty good neighborhood team growing up. And, uh, and that's who I became, and it became a part of me. And so every decision and every move that I made along the way turned into uh, decisions for this moment. I was a high school coach. I wouldn't trade that for the world. I was able to learn an awful lot of building programs, making decisions, guiding and mentoring people along the way. I was an offensive coordinator for 14 years at some highly profiled programs that taught me how to, to monitor and continue to control at the collegiate level and to coach and to guide. And all of it led to this moment. In 2016, my daughter is being recruited in volleyball and we took, we took visits and we happened to be down here. And we came here and we met with Coach Foreman. And uh, I remember looking at my wife and saying, this place is a gold mine. This is it, this is the one. And sure enough, from the leadership, Coach Mowgli at the time was the coach. They were winning and doing great things. And then he passed the torch along to coach and they continued to win. And in 2016, I remember sitting on the beach and the baseball team winning the national championship. And everybody on the beach was cheering and listening to the game on their radio, as, as were we. Um, and it just seemed like faith. And this became the job I wanted. And I watched and I saw the culture, I saw the leadership, I saw it continue and it just made me more hungry for the job and I waited for this one. The culture here created from our leadership is very, very similar to my belief and who I am and what I am going to try to continue to do here as well. I believe in the BAM standard. I believe in family. I believe in love. It's okay to use that word. It's all right. I believe in alignment. I believe in loyalty amongst two, amongst everybody involved in the program. I believe in having fun. It is still just a game. And although it gets put on a pedestal, it's about having fun with your brothers out on the field on a Saturday night. It doesn't get any better than that. Excuse me. <clears throat> My staff will also reflect the same qualities and characteristics that I possess. Character, integrity. I'm looking for guys that are great motivators, great teachers, guys that have juice, have energy and passion. I call them football coaches. There's a lot of guys that coach football, but I want football coaches. They breathe it, they live it. They're great communicators, they can connect. We're gonna help mold student athletes. They're gonna be better people, better citizens, better students, better husbands, better fathers for playing in our program. It'll be a, it'll be a team that Coastal Carolina, the community, the fan base, and the school will be very proud of. I ask one thing from the community and one thing only, let's make Brooks Stadium the toughest, most feared place to play in the Sunbelt Conference each and every Saturday. Recruiting, uh, very similar uh, philosophy. I look, I look for OKGs, our kind of guys. That's what I look for. Tough, physical, fast. Players that love the game of football. I use the same term. Football players, not guys who play football. I look for playmakers. I don't 
judge a player based on numbers. You don't win games with numbers. You win games with people. You win games with heart. You win games with character. You win games with integrity. And that's both with your staff and that's both with your players. Currently, regarding staff, I'm, I'm still in the evaluation process. Um, I've been here a day so I'm wrapping my head around everything as we, as we speak and go through it. But I believe in them. They've helped produce a great tradition, a great program, and every opportunity that they have, they can have with me, if they so choose. I am, I am incredibly blessed, incredibly humbled at this, uh, at this um, it's hard to put in the words, it really is. And all I can tell you that, you know, I'm not gonna stand up here and make a ton of promises about who we're gonna be and what kind of offense and defense and all of those type of things. Here's what I can tell you. I'm gonna give you everything I got. I've waited too long for this. I'm not gonna screw this up. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna treat this job with the utmost respect that it deserves and that every day I go into work, I constantly remind myself of the traditions and the people that were here before me that laid the foundation of what the Coastal Carolina football is all about. And, it, and it, it's a proud thing. It is very, very well known out in the world of college football that when you play Coastal Carolina, it's going to be a very tough, hard-fought football game with physical, fast players who like to have fun. And that's what I'm going to continue to build on and enhance to make Coastal Carolina stay at the top of the Sunbelt Conference. So I'm good. Thank, uh, thank you there. You're going to ask some questions? Yes, yes media. media, if you'll go ahead. Uh, raise your hands, media, and then we'll have the microphone ready for you. Hey, Coach. Uh, Adam Benson at the Sun News. I just wanted to, I don't know if you had a chance to look at your Twitter page the last couple of days, but there's a lot of teal on there. Uh, you, you sort of took it upon yourself to add to that. What, what's it like just to the social media vibe around this? And, you know, what, what have you been hearing from uh, folks up there directly from Teal Nation? I'll be honest. I haven't looked at my phone. I'm not even sure where it's at right now, to be honest with you. The last I looked, I had 387 text messages. Coach, uh, Brandon Dunn, ABC 15. Um, these players have gone through a lot over the last 24, 48 hours. Uh, what was your message to them when you met with them about kind of what your philosophy is and how to kind of repair maybe some things that have happened over the last couple of days? Yeah, so I met with the team earlier. Um, the first thing I told them was how much I appreciated them. They've been through a lot. It's, it can't be easy for a young man um, to lose someone they cared that much about. And, uh, but I gave him this analogy. If you had a flat tire, you don't slice the other three tires. You just change the one that's flat and you move on, right? So that's what we got to do. There's a flat tire and I'm the replacement and let's, let's roll, right? So um, I told him that philosophically right now, business as usual, we're going about our business. Um, Chad's going to be the interim coach for the bowl. I'm going to be a fly on the wall as I go through my evaluation process with everyone. Um, and there, there really is no changes uh, to be made right now. And everyone's coaching here at Coastal Carolina until they're not coaching here at Coastal Carolina. So um, the last thing I told them, you know, it's, it's been a tough month. They got, they got one more opportunity. They got one more opportunity. And there's a standard and a culture that's set here. And there's a there's a characteristic and a quality that this football team plays with. And they're fighters. They're tough. And they got one more chance to go out there and show that together as a football team. And that's what they need to do. Don't, don't run from it. Face it. And let's fight. Hey, Coach. Hello, can you hear me? Hey, Coach, uh, Corinne McGrath with WMBF News. Um, you're obviously coming from North Carolina and 
You know, there's a lot of talent from the Carolinas uh, on this football team. Just how important is it to bring in uh, local talent to Coastal Carolina for you? Yeah, again, I'll be honest. I don't really care where they're from. They got to be OKGs, right? There are kind of guys. We'll go get them. I, I think that uh, when putting together a staff, recruiting is of the utmost. You know, over the years as an offensive coordinator, I was a lot better play caller when I had better players, <laughs> better running backs, better quarterbacks. Um, makes it a lot easier, certainly. So that's a, that's a priority. I, I've, I've uh, been on the phone with all our current committed guys, um, probably going to hit the road tomorrow or the next day. And I, I, told, I told the players and coaching staff there's three things right now where my focus is. Number one, my focus is on the current staff right now. Number two, it's on the current players. And number three, it's on our committed and recruits. Everything else other than that, I don't, I don't. I haven't really done much, including eat and sleep. Coach, uh, will you be uh, the primary play caller as a head coach, or have you thought about that yet? I, I doubt it. Right? I've I've done that. I think uh, an effective football coach, for the most part, manages the team. And there's a lot of stuff going on in today's world of college football. I've been involved in some staffs where if you had a coach on one side of the ball, he put so much emphasis on that one side of the ball, the other got ignored a little bit. And uh, I don't want to do that. And I think transfer portals, I think recruiting, I think special teams, they're such an integ integral part of the game and your program that, that I got to spend some time there too as well. So right now that's my initial thought. I'll just throw another one at you. Um, um, Will you, do you plan to take part in the bowl preparation at all, or will you, and will you be there with the team in the bowl game? I'll, I'll, I'll be the biggest cheerleader for the game. <laughs> I'm going to be involved, but, again, right now we're going business as usual with the coaching staff. Um, they're just kind of running things by me in terms of practice schedules and giving our players a little bit of time off to go home, uh, that type of stuff. Hi, Coach. Chris Parks from News 13 here. Welcome to Conway. First and foremost, uh, just kind of give me your impressions of the Sun Belt Conference, obviously expanding to 14 teams. Um, what are your impressions about playing in a, a grueling schedule like that uh, kind of going forward? Yeah, I think um, the conference has certainly got a lot more difficult, uh, which is great. I mean, we'll, we'll take on all comers. We're, we're not going to back down from anyone. And, and uh, to be the best, you got to play the best all the time. And so I think our players, our, our staff is going to be extremely excited about the opportunity each and every week. And, you know, some of the conferences, the Big 12, you know, the Big 10, and even, you know, that I've been in, ACC, I mean, you got to come to play every week anymore. Anybody can beat anybody. So whether, whether you're playing some, some of the new teams that are coming in or some of the old teams that are in that Sun Belt, you got to be ready to play every week. Uh, hi, Coach Danny Kelly with the Post and Courier. Um, you know, with the transfer portal being such a, you know, a, you know, a giant as it is now, just how how comfortable are you with the transfer portal? How much what? How, how comfortable are you with getting players in the transfer portal? Yeah. So the transfer portal. Yeah, the four-letter word uh, for coaches. Um, you know, it's a. Uh, it's an interesting thing. I, my advice, I'll, I'll say this. I'm going to use this as a platform here. My advice, and I, I talked to the team a little bit, if you're looking to get in the transfer portal, I hope you have a place to go because it is extremely crowded. I think young men today think if things aren't going right or there's some changes, they, they want to get in that and create a new start. Unfortunately, uh, college coaches don't view it as that. <laughs> they, they target people. Um, and, they, and they go after them. And so there are a few exceptions. There are some people that, that are going in because they do want to play or go to a different school, which I, I fully understand. How do I view it? I think um, because it is relatively new, I think it has a place. I think when you have a significant need, be graduation, you may have a kid medical and you're, you're short in a certain class, or a kid may graduate, or a kid gets in the portal, a player leaves and goes in the portal, and you have a gap that you have to fill or a need that you have to fill, I think you have to address it, and that would be a, 
an answer now for a lot of staffs to be able to address it, where it used to be maybe junior college, now you have an opportunity to use the portal. So yeah, I, everyone has to have an, uh, be able to use that, and we will. Coach, you just addressed the portal, which was half of my question. The other question is NIL. Uh, obviously, it, the, it's become a huge thing in college football. How do you address that as well in terms of, you know, trying to um, raise money for this university to help with that situation, to help with these players in, that ter in those terms? Yeah, NIL's become, you know, another four-letter word, <laughs> basically. But, uh, you know, I think, I think it's great for the college athlete. Right, college athlete has a right to use his name, image, and likeness to supplement himself. And so I think that that's a, a, a great thing. The NCAA has specific rules that uh, coaches really aren't to be involved, that this has to come much from outside sources and usually through the players. And so um, there's, there's ways to educate, teach, our young players how to take advantage of that. As a coach, I certainly uh, believe that that's the right thing to do for them. And in, in, in ways legally that we're able to help them, we will help them through education, guidance, contact, potentially those type of things. Hi coach, Parker Gallagher with WCCU Radio here. Uh, welcome to the beach, first of all. Um, you said CCU is a gold mine. What is the most valuable thing that you've seen here at CCU? The most what? Valuable thing that you've seen here at CCU. The most valuable thing, um, what I've seen, is the culture, right? I think the, you watch our football team play, how hard they play, and I talked to them about this, right? Great football teams that consistently win, they play hard because of the love of the guy behind them, not because of they hate a guy across from them. And so you feel that a lot with our team. They love each other. And so because of that, they, they practice hard, they play hard, they're physical. And so it's a little bit harder. It's family, right? You're, you're coming after my brother, and so I'm going to defend him, and I'm going to fight a little bit harder because they're family. And so I think that characteristic, that quality here at Coastal is second to none. And it's a little bit what Joe was talking about earlier about what makes it so unique and so special and why things are done a little bit different here. It's, that's our brand. That's what makes us who we are. Any other questions from the media? One more up front. Um, they've had a pretty unique offense here for a few years. Uh, what, I guess what type of offense do you plan to institute? I'm sure it's going to be quite different. One that scores a lot. Whatever that is, like I, that's no. I agree. I, I think uh, I think that uh, it is extremely unique. Believe it or not, I I ran. I was quarterback in an option offense in high school. I don't look it, but I was at one time. Um, I was a high school coach. I ran the triple. With Paul Johnson. I learned it. Would go down to Georgia Southern. I, when I was in Texas, I'd drive my van 16 hours and spend a whole spring break with them. So I think it's a very unique offense. Um, I think what, what Willie's done is phenomenal. Um, it is. Um, and so if we, can, if we can keep the pieces in place to keep that to be a, uh, an advantage for us, then so be it, and we'll try to do that. But I can't make any promises that that's going to take place. And we're still in that evaluation process, and where we go from there um, – I'll, I'll know as time passes a little bit more. I don't want to. I don't want to get too much into schematics yet. Um, I have philosophical. I mean, because again, I, I you win with people. It's not plays, really. I mean, I I know it's kind of weird. People don't believe that, but it, it's true. You you get good people that play really hard, and some team's going to run zone, and some team's going to run power, and some team's going to throw it. I know it's just the guys playing hard and blocking and tackling and running to the football and protecting the football and throwing and catching. That's really what the game is. It's, it's still a game, and they've been playing it, you know, since they're yay high, and you just got to let them go play. You got to trust them, and 
turn them loose. But it's got to be simple so they can play fast. Any other questions? All right, Coach, we got uh, one more thing for you. And uh, to officially make you our fourth head coach at Coastal Carolina University. Thank you. Nice. Thank you, Teal Nation, for coming. We appreciate it. Go Shonts!